Alita Chimachuma Yakoki Ohoyo Apihuma. Greetings, I am Nura, an indigenous Aboriginal Choctaw woman, and thank you for listening. Uh, before Victor and I have our conversation about the Articles of Confederation, I will start with an introduction of definitions and a brief background of the Articles of Confederation. Many people speak about uh, these, this colonizer document on YouTube. They read books about it, but they never review what is really written in the document itself. And we'll never know or comprehend what it is or who it was for until we read it ourselves. First, uh, what were the original 13 colonies? And then what is the Articles of Confederation? The original 13 colonies, known as the 13 British colonies, the 13 American colonies, and the United colonies, were a group of British colonies on the Atlantic coast of North America. What is a colony? A dependent political community, in this case, Europeans dependent on Britain, consisting of a number of citizens of the same country, meaning Britain, who have immigrated therefrom, meaning quit their own country of Great Britain to people or populate another, meaning the uh, now called the Americas, America Pana, Turtle Island. Um, um, in other words, they go to populate somebody else's land. But they remain subject to their mother country of Great Britain. Also, it's a settlement in a foreign country, again, say like Turtle Island, Amaru Kapana, um, in the indigenous Choctaw, or Choctaw tongue, it would be Midliki Yakni, uh, now called the Americas. So they possess the land, they control it, occupy it, cultivate it, and um, with their descendants, and then, but they still have a political connection with it and a subordination to or in submission of their mother country of Great Britain. Okay. You can also see the uh, colonizers Black Law Dictionary, revised fourth edition, page 331, to look up the definition of colony. Now, being motivated by commerce, dominion, and power, Great Britain sent. Uh, what they call white men and boys to start colonizing on our land in the 17th and 18th centuries. They also, along with them, there were Moorish slaves to steer their vessels for them. In three separate groups, dominated by a Christian Protestant English speaker, they had their own political, commercial, and legal systems. These original 13 colonies were one, in their group, the New England group consisted of New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut colonies. The middle group consisted of New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and the Delaware colonies. And then the third, the southern group, consisted of Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia colonies. All 13 colonies were the possession of Great Britain and what they call uh, they called our ancient world where we've been always all the time on this land uh, their new world our ancient old world they call this land their new world Britain also um, included territory in what is now called Canada, Florida and the Caribbean and you know Caribbean means savages April of 1775, the colonizers began the fight against their own British masters, and they called that fight the American Revolutionary War, Revolutionary War, or the American War of Independence, which had absolutely nothing to do with uh, these foreigners helping the indigenous Aborigine people, but it had everything to do with conducting commerce and a breaking free on our land from their masters. It had nothing to do with us whatsoever. 
These colonizers formed their United States of America by declaring full independence in July of 1776. Now, they, they did this on their own. They didn't ask our permission. Uh, they didn't get any kind of authorization. They just de- made a declaration. Now, the Articles of Confederation and Perpetual Union was an agreement among the 13 original colonies of the United States of America that served as its first frame of their de facto government by vicious and bloody forces of arms using methods of outright slaughter, biological warfare, uh, breeding us out of the indigenous people, uh, of the indigenous people. They approved their Articles of Confederation between July of 1776 and by their Second Continental Congress or their meeting on uh, November 15th of 1777. That came into force by their own system on March 1st of 1781. Now their guiding principle of the Articles was to establish and preserve their own independence and sovereignty on our land under the power of their British king. So brothers and sisters, this had these these articles, these documents, these constitutions, it doesn't matter if they adopted uh, forms of uh, the way that indigenous people had done things over here. Their goal, regardless, was to actually take over after they settled and colonized our land.
have all these people listening to them. And so they start holding up these documents. You know, embracing these documents. And it's not, it's not ours. Now, when we look at the, the actual wording of it. These people talk about it. They read other people's books about it. But look at the actual wording of it yourself. See what it says for yourself. Then you will see that it has absolutely nothing to do with the indigenous aborigine on this land. It had to do with the people running from their own homeland to colonize our land. And what's in those documents benefits them. It does not benefit us. Because if it did benefit us, then how come we're in this situation and we've been like this ever since they've been here? They separated our people out, put us in all kinds of different categories and things. That's because of their constitution. That's part of their way of separating, dividing to conquer. And they have, they have conquered us because we still hold on to their stuff. second thing in that black box, an unrelenting stream of immigration, non-stop, non-stop. Folks like me who were Caucasian of European descent, for the first time in 2017, will be in an absolute minority in the United States of America. Absolute minority. Fewer than 50% of the people in America, from then and on, will be white European stock. That's not a bad thing. That's a, that's a source of our strength. But there is a thing called minority rule. And in the end of his, whatever he said, he's saying that, well, it's not going to hurt us or um, it's, it, it's good for them or whatever. But there's always been, they have always been the minority all over the world where a few people handful of people as a minority have dominate they have dominant control of economics the social structure um, whatever economic social and political they have dominated that look around look at what's how, what things are how things are happening now you got these handful of people I don't care if you call it a democracy the mob rule or way or the Republican form of government, they, their government, is still their government and a uh, representative of the people. Not one of those people up in them doggone White House have an indigenous, aboriginal, appellation or name. You don't see none of us up there. You see the same old colonizer children offspring up there and then they have a few niggas here and there come in there, you know, make decisions. But it's not making decisions for us. It's making uh, decisions that benefits them. I'm going to show you some examples. Now, we have these people, these Europeans now, in the Ukraine. They're trying to flee or whatever. Guess what these people are doing? Just like they've been doing all the time with their naturalization act and all that. They're bringing them over here. And look, I'm going to show you a clip. These are the kind of houses that they have. What does the indigenous and aborigine Look at the houses that we have. Look at the housing that we have in the areas. Okay, we're showing uh, Detroit, Michigan, Oakland, California. And what makes it so bad? All this land that we see, all this land, all these miles that we've been traveling so far. Yeah, all these good, good things. These, yeah, that's right. I'm gonna get to that too. This land, they're the ones that say that they own it. 
all derives from that major abomination which is a part of manifest destiny the doctrine of discovery where the Rome it could have been not, not could have been it's all about the same thing these foreigners from way across the water somewhere in the Roman Empire Holy Roman Empire whatever how you want to say in the empire over there their popes of Rome chopped up the earth with artificial boundary lines section them off and said this is mine this is mine and this is what they've done today so these people they're bringing in all these Ukrainians and many of them before them look at Job 1790 naturalization act they didn't they didn't even say that the darkies can come in till, till 1870 and they the, the, the 1790 was the ones they called free white persons. Those are the ones that weren't in servitude in their own land. And then you got these Negroes over here speaking on they free white people. No. No, you're not. That was just a category of their own Caucasian and Europeans considered as white people to come over here and populate their United States colonies. Now they say these colonies are states. No, these are still colonies. They are what they were originally. Now, also, their United States colonies spent over $800 billion, and that was for last year, in the military. But look at the housing of the people and everything. They're building their arsenal. They keep their arsenal built up so they can keep what they've stolen. And to, that's one side of it. So militarily, they'll keep what they've stolen. And then socially, having you embrace their document signatures and things like that to keep what they've stolen. They got it checked on different avenues, different ways of doing it, different means and methods. And we keep buying into it. If we really want our liberation and be free like it was, and I want my, the way that my ancestors lived, build on that. I want to build on that, now, which is what we're trying to do today. We want that true liberation. We don't want to be up under any, anybody, on our, especially on our own land. And we know that we're not going to get there if we keep embracing this, the stuff that they brought over here with us to keep us in these positions, these underlying, underlying positions. that's not really actually needed. 
but we use it just like a tool until we become strong enough and able enough to really actually change this part of the world just as we was meant to do in the before first place. They, yeah, before they got here. So if we're looking at a change and we're looking at answers, don't let the system control you, but you control the system. In other words, I know you got going those Abbey European jobs and work, but yet it doesn't have to control your mind. You don't have to be so attached to it and come underneath their system to where it's controlling you. You don't have to go into their debt because their system is about debt. That's what keeps you in bondage. In bondage, exactly right. That's what keeps you having to work for them when abundance is a natural law of the universe according to nature. So evidently there's something controlling you to where you may not have a place to live, you may not have a place to stay, you may not even have gas to put inside of your car. That's because something else is controlling you and you're not controlling it. That's right. Now, many, I know many of us think that this is an impossible task. No, it's not. If you look at colonization, global scale the Asians got them colonizers out of their land Africa is getting these colonizers out of their land Australia is getting those colonizers out of our land their land we're the only place on earth that's still embracing the oppressor what is that called it's a psychological term Many of our people come to, to love the oppressor and accept anything he or she dishes out. We have to become or regain that strength that we once had, say when they first came over here and how our people, the majority of our people, not the handful of people that became civilized and called the five civilized tribes and assimilated into their system and then here it is today. This is their system and it has absolutely no benefit for us. Now, even though we come from nations and tribes that was a part of that, say like the Shalta and the Isachata or Greek Creek, uh, tribes uh, they were part of this so called civilized tribe but not all of us agreed with that we had our own minds and our own decisions to make that's why now uh, instead of Shawtaw it's Choctaw because it's one of their fictional terms that they use so that they can control it just like they do nature they can't patent uh, nothing in nature so they gotta mix it all up and uh, genetically modify, biochemically modify, and then they can control it and say it's theirs. So Choctaw belongs to them. And what we have to do is get regain our own cultures, regain our own. Get as much land as we can keep accumulating and building on to and building on to. We don't have to go into their system and buy it outright, get it outright cash. If you have to come together in groups, cash, buy the land outright. And when you sign those title documents, make sure you have everyone's appellation on there that's on there and put that connector and in there. Not or because like if one, one of us or one of you has some kind of conflict with these people in this system, this colonial system, they can take all the land if it's under one, one, one uh, name or appellation. So you gotta use each and every one. But um, we keep doing that. 
before you know it, it's going to push them out. It's going to push them out because they won't be, be able to have that control anymore. And as far as voting, quit signing your name to the vote or your appellation because then you still, you're giving them every, every time they had a so-called elections, then you're consenting for them to do to you whatever they feel. Because you're saying, yeah, do it. Okay, were you going to say something about um, the natural um, yeah we spoke on that um, I don't know there's so many things that we have to uh, think on that will be talked over the internet oh yeah these two 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 or three hour videos you don't need to speak all these two or three hours to let people know what we need to do. And then keep talking about the same old problems over and over and over and over again. And then uplifting the, 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 the very same documents that get getting us in trouble, these instruments. All of that fruit of the, the poisonous tree. And I mentioned that on some of my videos already. They had their own doctrine with the fruit of the poisonous tree. And it did anything derived from that the initial crime is all criminal. It's void. And every last document, every last institution in society is based on that, that initial crime. So we have to realize that we're on we're we're, we're on a, a, a good still trying to embrace all of these um, contracts as if they're, they're for us. I think I, I don't know if I was mentioning how they get their people over here. Oh yeah, that's the naturalization act, which is um, 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 supported by their constitution. And um, so they can get whomever they want over here, whenever they want. They can pick and choose who they want to become their U.S. citizen subjects. And that's all that's for. Uh, how come you don't have that decision? How come you can't just pick them up and tell them, well, deport them and say, get off of our land? How come you can't do that? How come you can't get your, your own relatives, they may be down in South America somewhere, and bring them here? blended family without getting their permission. That's because they have dominance. They have minority control or minority rule. These handful of colonizers, they've expanded, but everything is based on their rule, their law. And uh, some people talk about color of law. All of it's colored. Because it's based on that same original diabolical crime when they done chopped up all the aboriginal indigenous people's lands stripped us of everything and now we're living under their minority rule like I said they've all they've always been a minority okay if you don't read the Articles of Confederation or the United States Constitution for or of the United States of America, you don't know it. Uh, you don't comprehend it. So instead of just listening to what other people say, take the actual documents and read them for yourself. Etymology of article. The clauses of a statute or contract. So this tells you, Articles of Confederation 
is a contract between the operators of these colonizers that invaded our land, raped and murdered, slaughtered our people, and stole the land, and they're in operation right now. That's what an article is. Most people, a lot of people don't know what it is, but it's a clause in a contract. The Articles of Confederation came from the Apostles' Creed. And what's the Apostles' Creed? That is Creed? Roman Catholic, from the Roman Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. So he gave the order to go to the land mm -hmm. and kill all the Aboriginal and Indigenous people. Mm -hmm. And we're, I'm not going to say we, people are going by those Articles of Confederation, consenting mm -hmm. that this continue on. Okay, now what you just said, I mean, we talking the truth, which is the correct knowledge of reality. This goes back to the doctrine of discovery, a manifest destiny. This is just one of their documents. It's a part of that original diabolical crime against humanity. Have knowledge for yourself. Look up Apostle Creed. Creed. Just Google it. Yeah. And it's going to tell you where this order from the Roman Catholic Church is coming Come from. from to kill, steal, and, and take destroy. everything that belongs to us. That's right. Like I said, we got to read these documents so that we'll know and comprehend what they're saying. Now, we're going to start with uh, um, just a few highlights of the Articles of Confederation. So we will know for sure for ourselves what it says. I'm going to uh, substitute the word state with the word colony because we've learned they're both one and the same. And at the end of our uh, preview of these highlights, I'm going to prove that all of these so-called states never stop being what they were born as, which are colonies. Starting with the Articles of Confederation's preamble, meaning the beginning of the contract the preface or the preliminary statement, it says in part, delegates, delegates of the colonies, articles of confederation and perpetual union between the colonies of, and then it goes on to list those. So this perpetual union between, it means amongst these colonies that they call states. Where does it say that it involves the Aboriginal indigenous people of this land? It doesn't. Again, brothers, brothers and sisters, in Article 3, it says, Colonies hereby severally enter into a firm league of friendship with each other. So, again, where does the indigenous Aboriginal of this land come in to be a part of the Articles of Confederation. We don't. Now down to Article 4. The better to secure and perpetuate mutual friendship and intercourse among the people of the different colonies in this union shall enjoy therein all the privileges of trade and commerce just like Victor was saying, just like the document says, just like the reason why they're over her here in the first place. It has nothing to do with the benefit of the indigenous people here. It has to do with them and their commerce. We are speaking to the Aborigine indigenous people of this land. So, in order for them to come over here and conduct commerce, they had to make their own laws. And their laws had nothing to do with the Aboriginal and indigenous people. Now, if you read these documents for yourself, first of all, they didn't think that you was going to understand it in the first place mm -hmm. because they made it for themselves. Mm -hmm. So they just called you dumb Negro, Black, Colored, African American. But what they was really actually doing is that they was twisting words 
making up and putting in what they want to put in so they can conduct commerce and control the land and take it from the Aboriginal and Indigenous people. Right, and now that they have done that, we're embracing their document. We're saying it's okay, yeah, go ahead and do that because we're not reading what it says. We're listening to these people on the internet. They're not telling you what the actual document says and it's not for us. As proven in the documents itself. In order to break loose from a stronghold, in other words, this mental deception that was put on the Aboriginal and Indigenous people, in order to break through this stronghold, you got to read these documents so you can understand what's mm -hmm. going on so you won't be tricked in your mind. Mm -hmm. That's where it all starts at. That way, they can steal everything that you have mm -hmm. and justify it by their own laws. Right, and your consent to it by embracing it. Okay, so now we're down to Article 6. It says, no colony shall engage in any war without the consent of the United States in Congress assembled. Receive certain advice unless, we've got to put that word in there, unless such colony receives certain advice of a resolution being formed by some nation of Indians to invade such state. This means that... Um, they have to get permission from each other, from their United States Congress assembled. If either one of them want to engage in any war against each other, they have to get permission. Because remember, these colonies were uh, had three separate groups, and they fought against each other. So there are law and rules among themselves within this Articles of Confederation. If they were to go to war within their within themselves, then they have to get permission from the United States Congress assembled. Otherwise, if they receive some kind of message that some uh, Indians, nations of Indians, is going to invade their colony against their kingdom or their state or whatever, then they can just go ahead. They don't have to get permission. They can just go on get go to war and kill them off or whatever. And you know they gave us that fictional word Indian to describe us. So um, this article six, it has absolutely nothing to benefit the Aboriginal indigenous. It has everything to do with killing us and keeping their land on their, col uh, their colonies on our land. In order for us to be able to realize that the truth of it is is that the whole attack is on us and who we really actually are. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what yeah. it is. Yeah. Uh, on, so uh, all as, these documents is yeah. just pounding us. Uh -huh. I'm just saying this to you. I don't know if you want to add anything to it. So we must be an important people in our own land. Mm -hmm. But unless we change and get this truth and what's really actually happening with these documents and be able to see the truth in it, they can still control our minds. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of wanted to stress that the attack is it's right there. It's all written. It's right all there. written. Okay. Okay. Now we're we're down to uh, Article Eight. All charges of war and all other expenses supplied by the several colonies in proportion to the value of all land within each colony. Man, can't you see that the land they talking about is our indigenous land? So they're gonna, all the charges and expenses, so they're gonna uh, pay all their charges and expenses using our land as collateral supplied by the several colonies in proportion to the value of all land within each colony. So they, they put in a, a dollar, a Federal Reserve note stamp on, on our land. It's like it's like our people don't see when they well I'm I'm sorry but they didn't read the document but they embracing these documents where they actually using our land to pay their expenses. It's in the document. You gotta read it to know it to comprehend it so you can stop embracing it so we can get this out of our land. Looking at these articles 
V11. That right there in itself tell you that this is Roman. That's right. These are what you call Roman numerals. numerals. Meaning they don't have anything to do with you. That's right. The Aboriginal and Indigenous people have to read these documents and it starts you off with Roman numerals. Mm -hmm. Then you know this is ours. Mm -hmm. This has nothing to do with you. That's a very good point. We're going to conduct commerce the way that we want to conduct commerce and we're going to kill you off on wherever we want to kill you off. On your own land. So therefore, in order for us to be strong, we have to have wisdom, knowledge, understanding that there are snakes in the grass. Mm -hmm. You just have to be able to discern what the snake is and don't put your hand in its mouth. Now, and these people that talk about embracing these, these documents on the internet, on YouTube and places like that, watch out for them because they are not giving you the correct knowledge of reality they are putting you back in the bondage and keeping you there by actually your own consent unbeknownst to you you're giving consent when you um, embrace these documents and go along with these documents like it has something to do with you no it has everything to do against you Okay, now we're down to Article 9. It says, United States and Congress assemble shall also have the sole and exclusive right and power of regulating the trade and managing all affairs with the Indians. Remember the word with etymology. Here it is on the screen. It means against. So I'm going to say this. Read it again. You can read it for yourself. They have the exclusive right and power of regulating the trade and managing all affairs against the Indians. Further down in the same article, to agree upon the number of land forces, meaning their militia, their military, and to make acquisitions or requisitions from each colony for its quota of men in proportion to the number of white inhabitants in such colonies or such state. Now, is an Aboriginal indigenous to this land white inhabitant? No. They're talking about their own colonizers, their own people, the foreign invaders. You need to read this document to know what's in it and stop embracing it, consenting to them staying here and being here and occupying our land. Finally, Article 11. I'm going to read this whole thing. Canada acceding to this confederation and adjoining in the measures of the United States States shall be admitted unto and entitled to all the advantages of this union, but no other colony shall be admitted into the same, and let such admission be agreed to by the nine colonies, states. This goes to show you, you get the word colony in there. that they're talking about colonies. These people that operate the United States or the divided states of uh, the America, they are what they originally born as, colonies. They're still colonies, as this proves that they are colonies and still colonies in Article 11. So again, my indigenous, Hatak, Apihuma, Ohoyo, Apihuma, brothers and sisters, Aboriginal indigenous to this land, these documents do not belong to us. They're not for us. They're all against us. So we need to stop embracing these documents. I know that a lot of our brothers and sisters want to establish their own way of living. But this is what this is saying, that they regulate and they show 
who they allow to come into their union. That's right. That's so, the Naturalization Act. When you see our brothers and sisters who is making all this fiat, let's just say 60 a million, whatever, when they go out there and try to start something, what happens? They kill them. They kill them. They take their land. Or you all already know what I'm talking about. Okay. A lot of our brothers and sisters have tried to establish something to mm-hmm. unify themselves. Mm-hmm. But according to these articles, you can't and won't do that. They can't. Because they're not going to allow you to. So this is the reason why this is happening to you. Yeah, And they're not going to allow them to because they agreed to their contract. Now, if... You're on your own and you ain't signed none of these contracts with these people. They don't do nothing to you because they can't. You didn't agree to it. And that's all this is. It's an agreement. When you go out and vote for these foreigners, you agree to keep them in uh, occupation and dominance and they minority rule over you. That's why the colonizer Biden... He's not worried about them being a, a, a minority like they always been a minority and it's good for them. It's because they in minority rule and they've been like that all the time. Now, if you look at this article, Canada, oh, Canada, you fine. And you will come on into our union. It's a colony. Yeah, like you- yeah. and plus, you know, uh, Canada, all that is a part of our indigenous, aboriginal indigenous lands. In the, in the Western Hemisphere low, over here. So Canada is colonized by Britain just like the, the North America. And here they selling our land that cannot be sold, supposedly, between Spain, France, England, you know, Britain, whatever. And we got to stop that. We got to stop consenting to this. Otherwise, we're going to still stir in the same soup. You're going to go to the very same oppressors in their own oppressive system, asking them to help to get you out of the same uh, oppressive system that they got you held hostage in. That's one of these ways that they're doing this, is through their documents. Earth.